So in today's video, we are going to be looking at how you can copy, you can clone, or you can just move or even back up your WordPress website using a fabulous little plugin called Duplicator, which basically takes the entire process into about a 15 minute activity. Even if you've never coded, you don't need any of those kind of technical skills whatsoever, as opposed to the old fashioned way that we used to have to move a WordPress website, whereby we would have to download and make a copy of the MySQL database, then copy down all of the front end files, move everything to the new location and then upload and then go back into the files and into the configuration files and then change all the URLs so that everything would connect together. That used to be an entire absolute fluff. It used to take me on average about three or four hours per website that you'd want to move and all of that can be done now in about 15 minutes with the tool I'm going to show you today. Awesome. Okay, so if you haven't been here before, my name is Angela McCall and this is McCall Media TV, a small YouTube channel dedicated to helping small business owners like you conquer their online digital marketing efforts. Now, so please do click that bell, subscribe to my channel. It will mean that every time I publish a video, you'll get a little notification. And if you have any questions or queries, put them in the comments below this video. I dive in on a regular basis and I will be sure to answer them best I can. Now we're going to dive on over and I'm going to basically show you the setup for today's activity. So over here on the left-hand side monitor, we have an example website. Now, one of the things that I'm doing in my business is I'm creating a demo site for obviously in this case, a one page brochure style website. I'm also going to do an e-commerce store as a demo site, as well as a membership site. So um, at the moment, when I set this up, I did so using a spare domain name of mine, but I actually also have a need for that domain name as well now. So not only do I need to jiggle things around, I thought actually there's a better way of doing this. Let's get a bit more organized. So as you can see here, and um, this is just a, a bulk standard one page website that I've made into a bit of a demo so people can see the kind of sections and availability and, and tools and features it has. Now, for, I do want to bring you over to the point out that it is on a secure site. So there is a valid SSL certificate uh, in operation on this domain, but more importantly, the hosting account for this. And when I move the site, I need to make sure, and I'm going to show you guys how to do the same, that I actually move it to a HTTPS compliant hosting account as well. Now it's actually going to stay inside my Ionis hosting. Um, it doesn't matter who you use, it's going to be pretty much the same principle. Um, so this is the task today. So if we quickly dive on over now here, you can see that I've got quite a few subdomains already set up. Now this one here that I'm highlighting, this is actually the subdomain that that website is living at. And as you can see, the name isn't very friendly, which I think is why I masked it with a different domain name. But actually moving forwards, you can see here, I've set up a domain or a subdomain, I should say, for my e-commerce store, my membership site, and also this one page website that we're gonna move. Now these two, I haven't yet attached to any space, but on this one here, I've now created a website space for my website to live. So that's the only prerequisites as it were, but I really needed to kind of sort out before I dive straight into today's activity. This is the tool that we're gonna be using. It's by a company called Snap Creek. Uh, basically, you can download it for free and you can upload it as an upload to a plug in the plugins page, which I'll point out to you in a minute. But it is extremely, extremely easy and they have also a little bit of a, a video on how it works and whatnot as well. So you can basically then take a copy of your entire website and stick it somewhere on like OneDrive or Google Drive as a backup, especially if you're gonna be doing lots of tinkering and things and you don't wanna mess up your account. And if you do, you wanna be able to roll back to a previous working version. So moving further on, what I've already got going on here is I've already logged into my one page website and I've navigated to my plugins. I'm going to click on add new and I'm going to add the plugin from within the search environment. But if I had downloaded it using that green button I just showed you about, I could upload it uh, using this and I have covered that before in other tutorials. So I'll put a link up here for you to go and watch those and help you refresh your memory. But essentially I'm going to type a search in for duplicator. And as you can see, I've done this a couple of times recently, so it's going to pre-populate. It's having a wee search. It's going to come back with some suggestions. And the one that I'm actually going to use over here, as you can see, is by Snap Creek. Now I have covered this in detail in other videos, but essentially it's compatible. It's got enough million users to know that, you know, a lot of people have tried and tested it and it would have reported any problems 
been recently updated. I'm a bit dubious of anything that's more than sort of like sort of three, four months old. So that's all good. I'm just going to click on that button where it says install. It's going to take a few seconds to unpack and download that plugin into my website's backend infrastructure. And then when it's ready, it's going to give me the button to activate it, which has just very timely appeared. So I'm just gonna click on that activation button and what you're gonna see is down here in the left hand side in a moment, we now have a duplicator option. If you click on that, um, as you can see, I have absolutely no nothing uh, working on this site whatsoever. So this is really easy for you guys to follow through. So the first thing we're gonna do, click on create new. Right, so we can name this if we want. Now it always puts the date and gives you an example. So basically it's grabbed this, removed all of the capital letters, removed all the spacing and appended it to the end of today's date. Let, I'll tell you what, let's just leave that it as it is. It's nice and easy for you guys to follow. That's how it's gonna work for you. You don't really need to touch any of this, but I'm just gonna quickly point out, this is a lot of the paths and information where it's all sort of happening. You don't need to touch any of that. Your archive zip file, it's got a tiny little zip there. I don't know if you can see it, but when you're going through this process yourself, you'll probably identify it. This is the file that gets generated. This is the entire website. So this is really important. Again, um, I'm not gonna fiddle with anything because I'm gonna do a straight move right now. But again, we could look at some you know, uh, like the database settings and things like that. It depends on how involved you wanna go. But I know from having used this tool now quite a lot of times that it's actually just very straightforward if we just leave all the default settings in place. Then you've got the installer itself, which if we download, uh, look at this, you can actually give it like a bit more of a password protection and give it some more actual characteristics. It depends if you're using cPanel as, uh, on your hosting account or not. Um, but essentially, again, you don't need to touch any of these values. You can leave everything as is. Now the installer is basically the program that's gonna unzip your website at its destination location and basically build it all back up the other end. So we need to basically to work with these two files. So I'm gonna click on next. Now this is a one page site. So as you can see there, it took literally milliseconds. On a site like my McCall Media Studios, where I've got lots of blog articles, a good sort of three or four dozen pages, that kind of thing, it would probably take two or three minutes. It also affects your internet connection. In my home here in Milton Keynes, I'm running a 200 meg line, so you saw how quick this was whilst I was talking. If you're obviously on a slower internet connection, you need to little, be a little bit patient. I've known this in the past to take a good five or so minutes. Time to put the kettle on, go make a brew, and come back when you're ready, and hopefully it will all be done for you. Now, to continue, we do actually need to uh, basically approve this process, and as you saw there, the build button became activated. So I'm just gonna click on that. And it's essentially now taking an entire copy of my site and it is literally building it into that zip file package as well as the installer that's personal to this particular backup as well. And I think when I did this as a trial run before I actually recorded this video, I think it took about 30 seconds. And um, again, like I said, I've got a 200 meg line, but it doesn't take too much time on a, on, on a small site. But again, this is one of those things you need to be a little bit patient with. Okay, so when it's done, it will then present you with these two uh, basic buttons that you need to download. I'm in Firefox, so at the moment, if I'm circling up here, because there's nothing there, but at the moment I start to download, um, it's gonna ask me to actually save this file. And now you can see there's this little blue download button kicking in. So if you're in a different browser to me, that's fine. You just need to go and hunt basically in your downloads folder. I'm gonna do the same with the archive itself. That's the zip file, that's the entire database. Um, it's telling me here that it's 145 meg. So it's telling me the size, but again, this might take just a few seconds. And if I click on that, you can see that the installer was milliseconds, but it's just taking its time to download there. So when that has done, um, if you quickly dive on over to your downloads folder, uh, there we go. You can see here that we have got the two files and I know where to find them in my downloads. I just wanted to point out that you guys are gonna to need to make sure you do know how to find and access this because we're gonna need it in just a second. So that is it, job done now. I can log out of my website. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up FileZilla. Now I've already navigated to my space and you can see here I've got my downloads folder. I'm just gonna 
refresh the screen and as I've refreshed it you can see now that I've got my zip file the archive that we've just created and the installer and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab both of those and I'm going to drag from the left to the right hand screen and it is going to take a wee second to upload obviously the installer was milliseconds but as you can see down in the bottom here the um, actual file itself is about 70% the way through so we just there we go we're all done and then what we need to do is we need to take a mental note of this name of this file so it's installer.php and it's in the main top level directory of my hosting okay so that is pretty much our job for FileZilla done and dusted well okay so I'm going to open up a new window here and I already know the path but this is essentially the subdomain that it's going to be living in this is my main website URL and then obviously at the end of that I'm going to put a path to my top level directory where that file installer.php lives and then when I finish typing in the direction to my file I'm going to hit return and it's going to start walking me through like a wizard setup basically to unpack that archive file. Real quick setup here again you don't really need to touch anything I'm just showing you what to expect that's the information on the archive itself. Then we've got the validation process. You can see everything is green, everything's good. It means that the file has been accepted. We've got options here. Again, we don't need to touch any of this because I didn't sort of uh, tinker, shall I say, with any of the original settings. We've just accepted the very default everywhere we've gone. So I'm just gonna click on, I've read the terms and conditions and I'm gonna click on next. Now, basically this is kind of like the extraction process. What it's gonna do is it's gonna take all those front end files, all of the actual pages, blog articles, images, all of the actual, what, what essentially is the front end files, the bit that you upload to WordPress and it's unpacked them, which is good. But now it's telling me I need to install a database so that it can unpack the MySQL database, which is where I need to have gone into my hosting now and created a empty database. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this particular video. It's something that if you're gonna fiddle with this process, the chances are you probably had to upload WordPress initially so you know how to create a database. All you need to do is essentially copy over the parameters for the settings for the database and basically pop them into this page here. And then when you've done that, um, basically you can just test that everything is okay. And as you can see, it's come back with green, everything passes and goods, which is great. So it's basically saying that the connection to the database is all good and it's ready to unpack the MySQL database. So I'm gonna click on the word next and it's just gonna ask me to double check I'm going to click continue now this will take us okay so this is now basically going to take a second or two but this is the important part that I wanted you to guys to pay attention to now I've already set up the SSL certificate in my hosting directory to where it's going to so this subdomain demo hyphen one page website that I showed you at the beginning of the video living here on my McCall media website already has an SSL certificate wildcard certificate installed and in place so it's automatically picked it up and shows there with that letter s now i know that's very tiny but i have just highlighted the fact that it's on a https url okay the s meaning obviously secure and that the site was coming from a https so everything is remaining compatible and the same if you're upgrading from HTTP to HTTPS, then you should also make sure at this point it says S here, which means that every single internal link within the file with all those images, all the URLs, all the pages, all the file names, absolutely everything that is built using this path will also contain the S, meaning it won't break your certificate. Because if you don't put it in here and you do upload your site, even if your site has got the SSL certificate, your site won't be secure because you haven't created it using a path that has that security uh, informed in its process. So just make sure that you uh, don't neglect this section here. Moving on down, none of this really needs to uh, apply. This is giving you the option to create a second admin account login if you wanted to. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just quite happy as I was using my original logon. All I wanted to do was move the site. So I've just clicked on done. Everything's good. It's now telling me I can pretty much go and log in. So before I go and do that, let's actually just take a copy of the actual path now and open up a blank data tab. 
and there we go. We can see now that my site has successfully moved over without too much of a hindrance to this new location. Now, the only thing I'm gonna tell you guys to watch out for that I've basically learned the hard way is some websites that I have designed and I've used this on has used a um, font installer. So say if the client has got a particular font and I didn't wanna go and fiddle with all the style sheet SSS your actual core style sheets and I maybe haven't created a child environment and that kind of stuff. Sometimes I have found that those plugins with the fonts and maybe some images don't always pull through correctly. They're all in the correct place. It's just like you have to go in and reselect it to make sure that that connection is current. So um, in this particular website, having done a test run earlier on today, there was no particular problems, all the fonts have copied over and so on. But if you do find that say, for example, you've put some sort of swirly fancy font in and this isn't working, just go back into the end of your website, wherever it is that you've actually initialized that font in the first place, literally just go and reselect it like you're doing so for the very first time. And somehow that miraculously reconnects everything in the back end and it will all become good and gravy once more so that's it for me today i hope that makes sense i hope that saves a lot of headaches and stress for you guys as you saw it literally has taken me 15 minutes to move an entire website from a to b check out its https security ssl certificate make sure everything is functioning and working as opposed to three or four hours doing everything manually and that is on a good run without any challenges or problems occurring that it would have taken me back in the day so i hope you've enjoyed this video please put your comments below don't forget to hit that subscribe button it does mean a lot to me especially as a small youtuber and i'll see you on another video real soon